All right. The World's Columbian Exposition, Chicago, 1893, marking the 401st year since the espoused discovery <laughs> of not Chicago, not even close, by one garish-faced Christopher Columbus. Yeah, as this takes you on a little tour, um, I've done so many hours of research. I've been really into this. Uh, I feel like I know it would I would know my way around there, and um, I would have totally snuck a camera. <laughs> no, I, it's it's pretty pretty obvious, I think. Um, so I, I have some conclusions. It, if you haven't seen the last video that I did with uh, Willy Wonka. <laughs> Because I came across that documentary and it was narrated by Gene Wilder. And so immediately I thought of Willy Wonka because it all fits together. That horror movie, also known as a children's movie, um, you know, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. And uh, Gene Wilder, you know, he did a good job in it, except that there's too much like monarch, you know, like ugh, this programming weird crap that shouldn't be in a children's movie by rights, but... Yeah, so anyway, um, I, it just, I had fun with it because he laid out the, the narrative. And um, it's the kind of stuff that, sure, I mean, I ate it up like most people in the past, but there were things that were said that bothered me and didn't sit well with me. And so it's quite vindicating to figure out what's really going on. Although we haven't gotten there yet, we're on our way. And uh, I'm getting way past the point of just noticing what's wrong and what doesn't fit and I'm starting to just start to see things that are in well plain sight if you will um, they seem to have made these things in order to teach people how to be how to think you know how to be it's it's the perfect thing for a reset it's just like orientation like when you go to college and you have orientation day and um, they they just kind of you don't know, is it cool to do this or that? It, things change from high school and you go to college and there are certain jokes that aren't funny and then other jokes that people make that are, you know, mostly as you get older though, the humor is taken out of things. Um, the maturity level increases, yeah, but the narrowing of the, the mind is not good. And that's definitely what goes on here. They're teaching you what to think. They're teaching you, um, well, they set the stage for the next 150 years. Because, you know, really, who gives a crap about the, uh, the you know, Archduke Franz Ferdinand uh, of Austria or the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and he gets assassinated, and then the United States goes to war in World War I? <laughs> the Great War, they called it at the time. They, did, they weren't so audacious as to call that World War I. But that's, that's the level of planning I'm talking about here. Like, oh, we got to get Franz Ferdinand there, get him in the papers so that everybody's familiar with him because he's got a big role in World War I coming up, you know? <laughs> because they foreshadowed everything here. I mean, first of all, who visits other, you know, and it's not just who visits, but who do they make a big deal about in their newspaper? Who do they allow the photographers to, to take pictures of? Um, so, yeah, if you haven't seen the previous documentary, you've got to see it because you'll see that they for they foreshadowed a lot of things. Um, and, and it's even said in the way of uh, these comments and quotes, you know, where somebody declares, you know, I declare that this fair means that if if mankind can't come together in peace after this, then nothing will and all this stuff. It's meant to break your spirit and to make you accept these foreign wars. They forbade cameras there, and no independent photographers were allowed to snap a single picture. They had a police force out in force to enforce this no camera rule, yet they invited reporters from all around the world to tell the story. Well, anyway, um, so they gather everybody there. It's just like orientation, and then they they teach you these things and then they put things in your mind so that you'll believe the news events of the future that they had planned. 
And they even went so far as to have a miniature 9-11 where this place, <laughs> I'll get to it later, but um, there's so much there to, to talk about. Um, I, I may just be all over the place, but like, okay, here we're in the Japan gardens and it's like they just mentioned casually that Japan was closed off to the West until uh, 1860. Like, in other words, in, if you lived in, quote, the West, you never saw a Japanese person. You didn't know anything about them. And so then they, but they got introduced here uh, to be part of the world stage because they had a role to play coming up in World War II. I mean, it may be that planned out. You know what I mean? Um, they even said, like, the Native American Indians were on their way out and the frontier they announced was closed <laughs> and so it's like okay the role of the Native Americans had done its job and maybe that was just to um, play a part you know what I'm saying like it served it that the nations served their purpose whatever that was in the history um, one remarkable thing that I noticed was well, two, uh, about the crowds who were there. And they say 27 million people visited, but um, <laughs> there were only um, a, a, a smattering of children. There weren't very many children in any of the photos that I saw. Hand, uh, just a handful. You would think there would be children, like this would be a big thing for children, but it wasn't. And it goes to this thing where, like I keep saying, almost everything we see seems to have kind of started around 1850. And so my working theory is that anybody older than 43 would be a controller and there are very few of them. And so most, most of the people, the, the oldest people are going to be about 43. I mean, the very oldest, like regular people that don't know what's going on. And then they haven't had time to have that many kids. Like the oldest of them may have had some kids, but those kids haven't had any. So they're, and so it's kind of in between like a, a generation boom at that point. Most of the people there were born probably in the 1860s, um, 1870s. And so they're really, you know, some of them are having kids, but a lot of them are just not. And then none of them are old. So then they have wheelchairs there. Like what? They're a little bit, a lot of them are a little bit young to be having children quite yet. So they look, you know, they look like they're, you know, 25, a lot of them. And so they had these wheelchairs there and it, and it was like one of those things that they introduced that so that they can have pictures of people in wheelchairs, maybe to make it seem like there are older people when there actually are not older people at that time. And then maybe the wheelchairs you know, maybe they could look like prams because you don't see a lot of people pushing prams. Like, I've been to Disney World and uh, the strollers, the prams, they're everywhere. They're lined up all over the place. There are banks, there are parking lots for the prams. There's nothing like that here. So how can you raise a bunch of children uh, and not have them be suspicious about the fact that there are no old people? Well, for starters, you have to remember when you were a child, you thought that somebody who's 17 is old when you were really young, just like somebody who's 40 or something, uh, it would be. So they would, you know, you're always convinced that there are old people out there because if there's anybody who's even a little bit older than you, then they seem old to you. <laughs> even though I'm, you know, I'm gonna be there soon enough, right? So. And then people in their 60s seem like really old to me, but then I can remember back when I when I was in my 20s, people in their 30s and early 40s seemed old, right? So it's all it's all relative. Uh, but they didn't have wheelchairs. They didn't see wheelchairs. So so it's one of those eureka things. Like so, they have they'd have to introduce wheelchairs to a population that had no need for them. And so they introduce them here. Everybody knows the term, you know, it's like they've got that language, you know, word magic stuff down where it's mind, you know, 
hey, you know, everybody knows what a wheelchair is, but nobody needs them because they're so old, right? You know? Um, yeah, it's amazing. So, like, they have uh, electric launches, if you saw that. That's like the Tesla boat. They have a Tesla boat. Um, it's really, it's an introduction to this new world order. That's really what it is. And then um, they have in the displays, in what they fill the buildings with is, for starters, there's a bunch of crap in there. You know, the, the world's biggest lump of coal and, you know, world's biggest worthless stupid thing. Oh, okay, look at this, this train. This is an electric train. They tore that down too. Yet Chicago still has an elevated rail. Hmm. Now I may not be the smartest guy in the world, but maybe there's a connection there, literally. <laughs> and all these buildings, if you look at them, I mean, this is just computer drawn, but they are in the photos and you know that they're built out of the real materials and not some fake crap. And they, they're all gone, burned down, you know, a few of them supposedly got moved places, but. And then even this um, Museum of Science and Industry on the left, when the camera swings back around, um, that is there, I've walked through it and everything. Um, Okay, they're not going to show it because I mentioned it, but uh, it's solid stone, marble, and all this stuff. Just like your local, you know, everybody's got these buildings, and they're magnificent, but they they tend to get rid of them. So uh, even that, they claimed to have completely gutted and refitted with marble and all these different things um and and that's part of their scam so uh somebody mentioned um that there's a channel quantum of conscious that was watching the video and he mentioned me and that so i watched a, a little bit oh these electric launches they yeah, had tesla boats fuel cells they they'd go and pick up a quick charge every six or eight hours um, sounds familiar, like if, if you have a Model 3 or something, you know. Um, but they had, uh, or Quantum Conscious was talking about how, like in his local museum, it's perfect. You know, it's got marble floor. There's no reason you would ever remodel that. But they're spending over half a billion dollars to remodel his local, you know, arts center or whatever it is, you know that cannot possibly turn a profit. Uh, but anyway, they're anonymous donors because they just print the money. And anyway, they are doing this, I think, just to be able to say that they they made it, they reappointed it. It doesn't change. I don't think they're actually going to destroy it, but they can just kind of put it into the history, the local history, like they did with this Museum of Science and Industry. They said, in 1933, 33, they totally gutted it and reappointed it, even though they also say, well, it was built to last. Well, you can't have one without the other. You know, I suppose they could say they're talking about the foundation on the one hand, and on the other hand, they they refitted it and blah, blah, blah. But then that just seems so, un, it's just so back. It's not, not the case at all. <laughs> and how they say, is built temporarily because they sprayed this um, white paint that they, they say it was this stuff called staff, which I don't know about. <laughs> but maybe they sprayed this gunk, this white stuff over the statues, you know, to hide the fact that it's marble, silver, gold, whatever it was. And you can see that stuff flaking off and it, there's not wood or iron underneath. It looks like marble underneath, stuff like that, you know. And that's really why they only had the fair one year. I saw the attendance. The attendance was like a, a, a marketing manager's dream. It was a 45 degree angle on a linear scaled graph. 
uh, over the summer with attendance that started out pretty high and it went higher and higher and higher until they closed. Yet they didn't reopen for the next year. Yeah, they had electric launches, if you saw that. Um, basically Tesla boats. That's something that we noticed in the research we've done where we see these boats in these very old pictures that seem to be running, you know, without a sail and without oars in the water and they're visibly moving through the water. And we wouldn't have thought that they would be electrical fuel cell driven boats, Tesla boats, you know, um, but they were. <laughs> so um, it's like there are many things unveiled here in this fair that are uh, a part of the, 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 the common culture now, but things that you thought were invented much later. And they speak of these um, electric arc lights and what they're talking about there is they're still being used right now in commercial speakers but not as much as they used to how many do you have i have about 15 of them right now you can feed it with ac this is being fed with oh, really? ac which is three phase the voltage on it's got to be 68 volts and we're dropping down to 135 amps down to 135 Holy! <laughs> Dang! Oh yeah, but what you do, you just squeeze it down like that, and when you hear it strike, <laughs> that sucker, oh. Yeah. And, and so you mean I push that down and then I pull this one? No, I'm gonna pull it now. Okay. Now, it's, then now it's everything's working, <laughs> and all you do is take this and push it down, and as soon as you hear Fast it, or go slow? and let go. And just like baby. <laughs> so they had Edison credited with the incandescent, but the thing is, incandescent was just one mode of lighting. They already had the electric arc lighting since 1810, of all things, 1810. That's fluorescent tubes, you know, that's mercury um, arc lamps so uh, now to be clear some of the buildings not this one that's the big big one but some of the buildings were built as they say they were but uh, they were done to be sh to, to show the people what they wanted them to believe and so the whole event of the the ice house burning down. <laughs> um, that whole thing was a big uh, staged event and that thing didn't look like the rest of these at all. But they said it was built exactly the same. They even make statements that all the buildings, all the columns, everything were all built exactly the same and only the Museum of Science and Industry was built to last. But then they go on and say that the different state houses were built but with the finest materials as each state tried to outdo each other, blah, blah, blah. That's bullcrap. Um, and then, you know, by the accounts, these drawings were made and you can see that there's a gold dome on the, you know, towers to the domes, you always see it. You always see it, uh, and all these poles, and they're not flag poles. I just, and and that's another proof that the the pictures that they made up of the construction of these, which we'll look at, um, are showing one of two things. I mean, either they're faked, or they're just a few select buildings that they actually built the way they said they built them all which would make sense you need to put in a few fill in a few spaces maybe something was damaged in the takeover or whatever but uh like that colonnade that was not built out of that stuff i don't believe but uh the ice house that they burnt down and they have a tower up it and they have people jumping off and all this big 
thing, big stage event, you know, it's uh, just to display what they want you to think, oh, the, boy, these things are flammable. I saw one burn down. Because when they have the whole city burn down that following winter, all of it's gone. All of a sudden, it all burned down when actually they hit it with a dew weapon, probably. Um, there will be men in town and women who will say, that is absolute bullshit. You can't burn marble. You can't burn stone. It didn't burn down. There's something else. But there will be these uh, know-it-alls who will have been there and seen that and been properly programmed, you know, and, and they will they will ridicule you and say, what, for Christ's sakes, I saw one burn down, you ass. I saw it burn down, but but that building is not like the others, okay? And you can tell in the picture, but you have to have a critical mind towards it. So it's it's all the same, you know, nothing. How many times has this been done, I wonder? That's, and where are we now? Um, does it just move? I think I have a theory that it just kind of moves westward around the circle of the earth, the great circle. And you know how like China's closed off. Nobody of all the tens of thousands of people who watch this video, nobody really is going to watch it in China. It's closed. You see what I mean? So that's how they can do these things and so when they they cut you off from the rest of the world they can do that stuff you know japan nobody knew about japan until 1860 it was closed to the west by whom who closed it you know i remember them teaching that to me in school and uh it's it's protectionism and they blame them but they were probably shut off by the West, you know, it's not the other way around. Anyway, um, so you look in the interiors and I have, um, I, I found a, a few pictures where it looks like they just funneled people through. They put up like what would be like a tent hallway and you just, they the building is so huge and it has all these interior features that they don't want you to see so they funnel you through in like a tent like a like a fun house you know and then oh well I went through that building or you know I went and I saw this exhibit but it's just like the room inside the room it's not the actual you're not looking at the interior of the building because the rooms were so huge they could do that how are you gonna know oh the ceilings only 27 feet it should be 34 feet why don't you show us the real ceiling instead of that tent sheet you have hanging or whatever oh yeah and in some of the pictures the flagpoles seem to be putting off light even during the day so this whole fair they said it used it was either a third the electricity of the rest of chicago or three times but I think it was a third of it, but it generated its own power and they never mentioned it like by what means did they generate the power because they said they ran underground lines. I mean, look at the plumbing, look at all these underground electrical lines, all that's torn up. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Um, so... I think it was excavated and it didn't take much to get it into working condition and they just had to whitewash it and put up different names for the buildings and things like that so what they put on display inside of the buildings is a um, national treasure type thing except it's just the the loot it's the bounty from conquering the the people or just 
scavenging the the remains of the flood you know excavating and unearthing these huge vases and things all these different things for giants like that telescope i mean there are just all kinds of things that are the world's biggest and then they put in misinformation by including things that are the world's biggest house made out of corn on a cob or the world's biggest coal rock you know like what and for all their whitewashing you can see how in the corners they couldn't really there are spots they couldn't really get and uh, that's another reason that they couldn't keep the fair going you know they have trouble getting into the the details so they had to say well then after they put the white staff on it they call it staff that play-doh or whatever it is they say they spray on it fiberglass whatever um no mention of who made all that stuff or anything but they put all that on there and then then they had to paint it white what what is that because people saw them painting the stuff white <laughs> Give me a break. I mean, if it was molded the way they said in these cheap panels and things, you would see repetitive panel forms. You know how many different forms they would have to construct to make all these different features? Tens of thousands of different forms. And if you're molding stuff for one event, you're not gonna have one mold for one statue and you pour it and you're done and then you do a different one and these are works of art these aren't play-doh creations these are i mean all these different features so high up uh give me a break and then then they construct it so they have to do ye oldie ladder lean instead of just constructing it like when you're constructing it something like this especially the construction workers themselves are going to create ladders and things so they can get from place to place in the process of building it. I mean, the size, look at the size. And all those features on the top of the dome, they molded features and whitewash painted it, come on. So, but yeah, so the construction workers are gonna build stairs and steps and things so they can get to their work they're not going to have it be a ladder on the outside and then have that be the solution or tear out the steps that the construction workers made or the scaffolds on the inside it's just this whole thing yeah so by my theory um the you wouldn't build something on the water if you couldn't build it on land. So they had land all around them that they claim was empty. But I look at the buildings immediately surrounding the the exposition park, Jackson Park, of the white city. And guess what? These buildings look like the buildings in the expo. And they're pretty big scale too. The doors, the windows, it all matches. And it, it doesn't surprise me at all. Um, it's, it's par for the course, really. I mean, these same buildings can be found all over the world, practically. Now, this is supposedly one that was left. But look in the distance, you see one that has been redone but you can still see some really large original windows on that that's like a five or six story giant you know apartment complex or something gosh can you imagine these giants walking around like that i mean it has to be you wouldn't make the floor so high with doorways so high and you wouldn't find these buildings buried in mud which they do where by the time a photographer gets to it, all the stairs and all the bathrooms are torn out. Or for some reason, they're not there. 
Um, but yeah, there's one. So we'll take a look at that on Blackstone Avenue. And it looks like, yeah, straight out of the exposition, right? Now the original doorway has been kind of filled in, but I mean, look at how small the doorways are in the front. Even the three doors have been made into six. <laughs> Tiny. We're so little. And it looks exactly, look at the stonework and everything. It's exactly like the, the fair. And then like this building, look at the level of it. Right into the ground, you know. Yeah. And the, the way Jackson Park looked. And then they have that statue there which is just small compared to the other one. So Jackson Park, oh, it's a big mud. Why would you do, why would you build your city there? You know, funny story. The reason I was thinking, why was I here? Because I, the one time I went to this museum, <clears throat> I actually didn't go inside very much. I went there because that's where I thought the Shedd Aquarium was. Because I know Chicago pretty well, but in my lifetime, I hadn't been to the Shedd Aquarium. I've been to Chicago a number of times. I hadn't been to this museum. I hadn't been to the Shedd Aquarium. You know, my family, like we would go to Chicago like once every five years or something, you know, because we're not, I mean, there are other big cities a little closer to us. So, but, you know, we'd make the trip out to Chicago and day trip or whatever. And so when I was on my own and I went out there, um, I went there first. It was just out of memory. It's just kind of weird, you know, because yeah i guess we didn't we it's one of those times i was so confident i didn't use gps or anything i knew i thought i knew where it was but it turns out they did have an aquarium there but again not in my lifetime i drove right to <laughs> in my research today i figured out that where i drove to is where the aquarium was but way in the distant past so it's like one of these weird things which i don't really know if i believe in at all but it's just funny i guess so they introduced vices um, and virtues. They introduced racism to people in the fairs by having these displays of these humans who were the worst kinds of humans. They Like opium addicts was a display that they had. <laughs> so, and then this Ferris wheel, does it make sense that the very first Ferris wheel would be by far the largest Ferris wheel ever. Does that make any sense? Did they teach you that in school that when you build something for the first time, you make it the biggest ever? Like this building, the building that they had, um, the main big building, which was the, the liberal arts. Okay, they introduced all these products as well. But, um, that building it was so huge. You can fit the, the, the Great Pyramid of Giza inside of it easily. And the Great Pyramid of Giza was the largest building in the world for thousands of years. And here's what I'm talking about, the tunnels, you know, so you can't see the insides of the buildings. Um, and then they built that building and then they tore it right down and it leaked during the exposition from the roof that there, there's somebody on the roof um which makes no sense at all because that sounds like an older building and why would you do a glass panel roof on a building that's not gonna last so many things make absolutely zero sense and the amount of money that they say they spent on these buildings is bullcrap to begin with and then they said they didn't know what to put inside of it. Why would you build a building for, in their dollars, half a million dollars, and not even know what you're going to put inside of it? And why would you make the doorways higher than the ground level? It's just, uh, I'm just, I'm done. I, I, I'm not, I'm not even gonna try to, uh, fit the official narrative into reality anymore. The official narrative is a laughable joke. Sorry, school kids. 
I, I really feel, f at least when I went through school, um, I thought maybe I was learning something that was mostly true, but I just don't have that. I mean, I don't know. You guys just have to figure, just you have to learn it because it's the official narrative and you have to know this crap. Just like you have to know the news. Why do they have the flag at half mass because of this fake death or whatever, fake event stuff, whatever. Okay, fine. I know what the story is, but you know it's not true. And the, the aim and the goal of a lot of these things is, is actually pretty sinister. So, like I touched on the racism, you know, there's that. And then the whole idea of drugs is in there. Um, look how small those boats are. You think of, some guys can get on those boats and discover a continent? and have that actually be the thing that really mattered. I honestly think that. What a story. And then they, they talk about Columbus in the documentary. I edited out a lot of parts of that. And um, you should thank me because they had these things in there where they would mention the name of Christopher Columbus and they put in this music of like a choir singing reverently in a chorus, you know, in a in a melodic or a harm, you know, with harm um, major key harmonies, and then you know, Columbus died penniless. Oh, you know, come on! But talk about wealth. I mean, what kind of wealth builds all this and tears it down? and then displays countless treasures, just too many to mention. They said several times, like, no human being, if they went to the fair every day that it was open for six months, could have possibly come close to seeing all of the different treasures on display. They didn't say treasures. And they feature these cornball things, you know, like, the world's largest hat made out of wicker sticks or whatever. It's like, okay. There were a lot of things that were world's largest that you wouldn't be able to explain how it would, it would be made, you know. And again, you know, with the electrical generation, they had all the machinery crammed into this one building and they made it so inhumanly loud that no... Nobody could stand to go in there. You couldn't think. You couldn't take pictures. That was fair boating. Um, so, and I noticed and all these pictures are from the official photographers. And the photographers apparently had, took a shine to, uh, to artwork because a lot of the stuff is drawn in. A lot of the people are drawn in. A lot of the flags are hand drawn in. Oh, that's because they waved around long exposure. Bull crap. Bull crap on the long exposure thing because I have too many pictures of waves, you know, that are not blurred. I have horses, all all kinds of animals and things in the process of walking and I mean just try to get some of these animals to stand still for a photo. Give me a break. No. They they could snap action shots they could have there are pictures of flags waving in the wind you don't need to draw the flags if you're drawing the flags you have a different reason to be doing that and just the fact that only official photographers could could take any pictures I mean, look at this scale look at the scale the indiana building what the hell does this structure have to do with indy freaking anna <laughs> I guess today it would have relevance with obesity, perhaps, but uh and then I've become very familiar with the previous civilizations characters. A lot of the main people in these 
are female and they are wearing these flowing like gowns like these toga type things uh, Lady Liberty is kind of like that but that's a mockery I mean it's not really it's it's a polyon it's not Lady Liberty um, so it's androgynous I think and it's there it's got one foot is chained to the ground now these ladies are free and they are actually women um, you know so when we get to the artwork you'll see you know the artwork was really good and um, from the previous civilization the women are actually physically attractive they're actual women you know they do they do something for you know a guy right they they initiate a chemistry right just the image of them unlike <laughs> a lot of the women that they show and like even these photographs in these old timey photographs like I never understood why how could the men have married the women back then they are so leathery stern faced awful looking just repulsive but now I know now I know because women are attractive women have always been attractive to me you know not all women but you know if it's but when I look at these old photos the quote women are never attractive to me and you know what I'm talking about like they flashed a few of those pictures of these stern faced women of the time that they try to make you believe like that's times were hard and blah 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 well times can be hard a lot of things can be hard and that that doesn't make a pretty woman ugly she's still gonna be pretty I mean, it can have an effect, but it's not going to make her into what they <laughs> were. But the previous civilization is nothing like that. And so why why would the men of this era have been the ones who drew the drawings and made the paintings and made the sculptures of the women of, quote, their time or the, quote, allegorical figures that they keep mentioning and then they look nothing like the the women that they that they say that they you know the women that they're married to like the the first ladies it just if you want to know what i'm talking about go through the old photos and portraits of the first ladies of the united states of america from martha washington on right through today and uh, michelle uh, Michelle Michael Michelle Obama is no not an exception to that I think um, it's just for a successful I would think that a highly successful intelligent jet setting man is gonna you know pull down some some better uh, yeah you know what I'm talking about than that so <laughs> that's it don't need to belabor the point wow torn down torn down if it were made of the materials that they say a strong wind would have blown that place away It's just, just unbelievable, unbelievable. So there are a couple buildings, like this building was built, I think, the way they said. The women's building. Um, because they have pictures of them either tearing it down or actually maybe perhaps actually building it. And I'll show those to you in a little bit. Machinery Hall looks nothing like any factory I have ever been in, and I've been in hundreds of factories. <laughs> it's just laughable. An absolute fairy tale of a joke. All right, so now I'm going to talk a little bit more about the official photography. And so 
what this ties into is I've mentioned it before Abraham Lincoln and the Civil War it's all only ever official photographers so you only get to see what they want you to see and then there's this this code you know this thing that they do where they put their hand in their jacket and and I I, I have a theory about that now because I always wondered like what's dignified about that like why would they do that but if they truly are the types of people who would worship what we now know as this Baphomet, it's a androgynous figure that has both parts, but men and women, so it has breasts. And so they're men, and so they, they stick their arms in there, and what they're doing is they're making breasts. So they're paying homage to their God that's saying that there is not a male and female you know because it the devil twists everything that god says so god made us male and female so what they do is they try to make it so that well if you're male then you should be more female if you're female you should be more male but um i like these photos that that get um improved but again it's not it's not real photography like all the photography, almost all of it from the exposition is potentially or likely altered, doctored, meddled with. Okay, so it's, you know, take it for what it's worth or not worth. So some of the things they started at the fair, one of them was like the Pledge of Allegiance started there. And I feel so differently about the Pledge of Allegiance now because I used to be so much in favor of it. You know, like you're un-American if you didn't. Now clearly that's mostly, it's, it's a photograph, but then it's also, a lot of it's drawn. Who puts these flags up and down every day? You know, or did they just put them up at the beginning of the fair and have tattered, ragged ribbons flying? I mean, that would be a scary, difficult job to put those flags up. Look at the size. So, um, yeah, well, I had a Ameri we had an American flag, uh, and um, I. Used to we used to take it down and put it up quite often. I mean, if you don't, it can become... And I'm talking about the older stuff. I mean, if you buy this, if you buy like a nylon one, it won't get so old. But okay, two stories, one tall tail, and the empty freeze, you know. And then look at this building it's huge in scale and then next to the one beside it it's even more ridiculous all right so i'm sorry about the pace of this it's gonna have to pick up or else i'm not even gonna get through it all and i have other things to do in this life i gotta make money okay so there so there's this uh thing about seven dirigible 785 feet long uh and it was built for giants. I mean, there's too much headroom in it. They, they say this is the hangar where it's built. And I propose that the hangar is the huge building. And then they have these other planes that look old from way back. And they are built for giants as well. So I think some of these buildings may have been used for those planes as, as well. And then in the artwork, you can see the people uh, were... Um, taller than... Like, their waist was at the railing heights of these... And if you saw a six or eight foot ladder only went four fifths of the way up that same railing. The world is flat. Look at Chicago, infrared, J. Tolan Media. This is Chicago today. You can see six, 800 miles. Those may be the Rocky Mountains in the distance, not clouds. I know I just blew your mind, some of you, but that's what I do here on the UAP channel. I do it so much I have to blast through it quickly. I think there was a giant in the previous photo. This is a unauthorized photo of the same place. They had the elevated rail lines, which they still do today. Um, this was built, um, 
haphazardly, but the building behind it, I think, was already there. And you can see by the way that they built it, um, it was really just the facade that they show and everything else was blocked off with wood very carefully. The architect who built this building said a strange thing where he said that the architecture and the experience of the Columbian Fair set back the world of architecture at least 50 years, something like that. It was a, it's a statement that would make no sense unless you understood things the way I'm beginning to understand them and I'm sharing with you. In other words, he was saying that the lies they told and the destruction that they did set back the advancement of architecture from what has already been made, it set it back 50 years. You can see the people going up to the roof there. They took an elevator, but they also had a stair. I guess they could go down if the elevator broke probably didn't if it was from the previous civilization. Although the moving walkway broke, they still had giant steps. I found a few that they just didn't manage to get rid of. Um, I enhanced some of these photos. Uh, there's, look at that size of that street lamp and they're changing a light bulb or something. I don't understand empty freezes and there are hidden giants. I saw some giants in that photo. You'll have to go back and pause it to see it because I don't know um, where at the moment. You can see I, some of this research I did was 1.52 a.m. my local time. Here's what I, I'm talking about where they built the wood structure and they're hiding the stuff. They're, they're hiding it. So this is what people saw. How could they have not seen the structures? This is what they saw. It was, it was off limits, it was fenced off. And then the photographs taken around that area, they all have the Niller sky the vanilla sky, so you can't see anything in the background. I showed you the picture previously by J. Tolan Media, which does an excellent job of showing the fact that the horizon rises to eye level no matter where you are, as long as you can see that far. And with infrared cameras, you can. Um, this is the women's building. Uh, supposedly, as they're building it or tearing it down, and if you look at that, that is not, I mean, that that's, not what they said it was. They built wood around it, and it looks like hell. And even after they finished it, the woman's building, just like the ice building, looks like hell. But the bones of it look immaculate. That is, of course, what was already there. So what they did is they just basically built a building around a colonnade. Lit up at night, it must have been spectacular. And that's part of the type of thing that these bastards do, is they show you what you can't have. Nothing pisses me off more than that. And they have these fake doors, and the real door is hidden behind all that gaudy crap. And then they have, those are the arc lamps. Okay, so now we're gonna slow it down. All right, so the, the artwork in here, um, I spent a, a good deal of time looking at it and uh, these are, it's like national treasure. This is all the treasure from the conquered civilization, but it's not over some distant historical time. It's, it's in, it's as the westward expansion happened, they collected up this stuff. And as they're shipping it back to where they are, where everybody is here, uh, it made its way through and it got introduced in these exhibitions. And you look at the details in these and what they're painting, what it's about, and it's the process of this poor civilization, what they went through. They're telling the story of what it was like as they were being conquered. And um, it may be in their distant past. I don't know how long their demise was but they have what looks like air balloons or something there. Um, those are giants and they're, it's giants painting giants and the, 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 the things they're holding, the technologies in some of these may have made these masterpieces um, have to be in the minds of these controllers, have to be destroyed or 
I bet you a lot of these are in secret vaults. And I'd love to see them, you know. Uh, but I don't think I ever will. But I would love to. Like these. She has her hands on her head. She's on the rooftop of like one of these types of buildings. And it's what it seems like to me. Um, and they're just like, they're having their oh shit moments. Because these pip squeaks are coming from the east and they're making a nuisance of themselves and they're ruining everything and so I zoomed in real tight on the the dates and the dates are like what like the ones don't belong so it says like 690-701 so this was painted from the year 690 to 701 so it took them 11 years to paint it. That's what I think that means, okay? Um, and there are other ones I, I'm not quite sure about, but this one kind of looks like 891. And it looks like they've attempted to smudge it out. Everything else in these paintings is in immaculate detail. How can the same painter who knows how to paint perfect images of faces and things not know how to do his name right or not know how to put down the date so it doesn't get smudged away um that looks like a bullshit name you know when they have it on a card leaning against the front of it the flagellants the farters come on mockery it's kicking your uh, enemy when they're down that's what that is i mean i don't know Maybe I'm misreading something, but it just seemed, <laughs> it just seemed like the type of stuff, the type of mockery, you know, that they do. So here, this one, they're they're being evacuated. They're fleeing. They they've met in their town hall or whatever it is, and the news is bad. Now clearly they aren't the giants. They are. Uh, way smaller than those doorways. Those are immense. But they have to leave. And they're not happy about it. And there's no Niller Sky here. So this is where you get to see what they've hidden with the Niller Skies. And look at it. It's almost like a photograph. It really is. There's some kind of thing going on with the black and white. You know, some people are in white, some people are in black. The size of the paintings from this, you know, these 16th century paintings is what they're called nowadays. But the size of them is immense and it's appropriate to the, I think, the size of the people, you know. Not I know a lot of painters. Not many painters ever paint anything on a canvas that big today. It's impractical. It's it's not even useful, you know. And so then they have this like little Venice, and this was part of the exposition. pause for a helicopter to fly by um, this is just one tiny part and like nobody saw at the exposition and it's built totally different from everything else they said but it's law it's all lit up everything was lit up and powered by geothermal and atmospheric energy in my opinion they said it was a mystery. And then now we're back to the Niller skies and all this. So it was a rare treat to be able to see the... Um, see that castle back there? You can see the stones inside the windows as the stone wraps around. If you zoom in, those are stones. They're not... St that's not paper mache or <laughs> plaster or... or marshmallow cream or whatever Mr. 
Willy Wonka whipped up in his candy factory. But they did have a candy making machine. They had everything. Everything. It, we've always had it. We, it. It's always been here, you know. I've told kids, I've been telling kids that that like I felt like I had like I knew they had everything in the 1980s we had everything when I was a little kid I'm not I just haven't been impressed by a lot of stuff okay these are giants in there in that photo you can see how low the railing height is to them and everything um, but yeah I, I tell kids we had everything in the 1980s and we did but but now I'm pretty convinced that they had everything in the 1890s and before. Everything. That's how the controllers stay in control. That's where the, the, the stairs back there. And they are stairs and they don't match the size of people. Look at this hall. Look how huge it is. They're playing musical chairs in there. They don't know what else to do with it. That's part of the th theme of these World's Fairs is they had all this stuff and they didn't know what to do do with it just like people didn't know how to dress they were given their school uniform of indoctrination and they didn't have any style they all dressed the same because they didn't know and the clothes they were given are, are stupid they're too hot and we will never go back to wearing those woolen clothes that, that they they must have been so uncomfortable it's like a joke but they have this thing when they reset society they they have everybody be so modest and innocent in a way and but then they they also introduce the um the so-called lowbrow elements but they mix good with the bad with that stuff okay so like they make you know like they, they put things together that don't belong together necessarily. You know, like free thinking with having sex with anything that moves. You know, the counterculture of the 60s is in so many ways awesome. I used to not like hippies. I love hippies now. But there are things about the hippie movement that I never liked and I still don't. And it's the, I love the free thinking I love how hippies don't buzz kill people. Um, they don't kill people in any way. <laughs> you know, they're against every form, including buzz killing. But but then the free thinking goes a little too far, and then it gets into where it you know have sex with anything that moves, if it feels good, do it. That kind of stuff is, you know, it's not good. So, um, I think you know that's how they that's how they characterize these things because they're the there are things that are good that they don't like, and so they make it like a, a comorbid situation when it, it isn't. It doesn't have to be. You don't need to have. You don't have to be legalistic about everything and, and be, you know, super super conservative and then be totally liberal where you have no responsibility on the other hand but that's how they've always divided us and that's as much as they make it seem like it's all about coming together it was not the Colombian exposition was about bringing everybody to the get together and then dividing them amongst each other against themselves just like with the civil war you know it's it's all um planned out ahead of time and meant meant for these things that's why they had f emperor uh, or archduke franz ferdinand there where they made sure everybody saw him and then they they mentioned Christopher Columbus's descendant was there and he was seen all over the place all the time and they're intimating that it's like Santa Claus in every mall you know like the dummies don't even realize that isn't it's bullshit 
not only is it not the descendant of Christopher Columbus, but Christopher Columbus is a fairy tale probably anyway. And, and then even if there was a real man who did those things, think about it. Why would you be celebrating somebody who went and, and ruined stuff and committed genocide and, and enslaved people? And it would be a nightmare to have Christopher Columbus arrive on your island or anywhere near you. And they're celebrating that. And they do it just with the repetition that they introduce the Pledge of Allegiance, you know. I'm not... Are, have you pledged your allegiance to a flag? A flag. A cloth with stars and stripes on it. Stars like fallen stars. Stripes as in your blood. Blood. Blood stained over purity? No. Oh, well, you don't understand. It's Uncle Sam, you know, it's the, you know, the blood and the fight for freedom. And how, many, how many wars have been fighting for freedom? <laughs> you know, America, uh, they're foreign wars. You know? You get in there and meddle in someone else's affairs. And you're trusting the authorities to tell you who you're killing and why. And I don't, I don't trust the authorities to tell me that I should kill somebody and why I should. And it's for freedom when I, I, you're going to have to prove it because if you can't connect the dots, you know, just something to think about there. So, um, and then they show the giant in plain sight. And they always have this lady, like, see how she's behind Uncle Sam? They're just putting her back, putting her down all the time. And then here are all the small people coming in from the water. I mean, it's all right there in your face. And he's waving them towards the exposition. All these different nations, and they, they come together in peace there, and and then they go off and they just start fighting all these wars, world wars. And the exhibition showed all these huge guns that were never used. I mean, they were never used in our wars because we're puny people. You know, but the previous civilization left them. So... Uh, I think I've covered it well enough. There's there's more stuff I, I noticed. There are many more things I could mention, but I, I just don't want to stay on the topic too long. So let me know if you enjoyed it. I really in, in, enjoy and appreciate your comments. Do share. Do like it. I don't know if it makes a difference anymore, but I appreciate seeing the likes. And I think it makes a statement. I had a video on my other channel that I made that was very good. If you didn't see it, and I know most of you didn't because it only had like 1,500 views, it is banned from YouTube now. Um, so I'm sorry if you didn't get to see it, but it was about law enforcement. It's gone. So uh, maybe, maybe I'll put it up somewhere else but I doubt it because I don't want to start doing that because I want to stay in good standing with YouTube and I know if you if you go and run around and put it on some other platform whatever what they ban it's none of their business I know but um, you know it's a, it's a chink in the armor it's not you know, it's nothing it's not too big of a deal. So uh, I'll just have to talk about it instead of showing things or whatever, but maybe another time. Anyway, uh, so thanks for watching. I hope you had a good time. The uh, Mystery History World Tour will commence again and have a stop probably 
somewhere outside of Chicago for the first time in four episodes. And um, in the meantime, I may throw up a few videos about fake space or real space. I took some neat um, vids of uh, Jupiter and Jupiter's moons and the moon. And you got to see it because this the Nikon camera that I have, the P1000, is awesome. I have a good tripod now. And I'm going to uh, process these videos, put them up for you. So there's that. I have some new music. I'll just probably put the music to the videos because there's not too much to say when looking at the, the moon and, and Jupiter. Um, but uh, anyway, you'll be able to enjoy that too or not if you don't want to. But thanks for coming and oh, subscribe to this channel if you haven't and you may have to again. <laughs> it happens. And then subscribe to my other channel and then again because it happens. And um, support if you really, really like it. And with that, I say good day, sir.